Um, hi, everybody. I'm uh, Michael Branson Smith. I have been working on a project with a. Hello, everyone. It's great to be here at oh. Reclaim Open 2023. Oh. <laughs> I'm Alan Levine, and I am here today to talk. He's already going ahead and jumping in. Calm down, Alan. Yeah. So this is. Um, let me let me just introduce Alan to you. AI 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 went into you. Yeah. And this is he he wants to. He's going to make this presentation. I'm, I'm here as just a passenger, by the way. This is not my presentation. You're a medium. Yeah. And the internet is interesting, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. Hello, everyone. It's great to be here at Reclaim Open 2023. I'm Alan Levine, and I am here today to talk about my work on SPLOTS, or the simplest possible learning online tools. Splots is a project that has been very close to my heart for many years now, uh -oh. and I'm Poor excited Alan. to share with you. He did all the stuff. He gave me a local file, so maybe we should just use that. Here, we'll do this. Okay. Be here at Reclaim Open 2023. I'm Alan Levine, and I am here today to talk about my work on Splots, or the simplest possible learning online tools. Splots is a project that has been very close to my heart for many years now, and I am excited to share with you all the story of its birth and growth. I first came up with the idea for Splots in 2014 during a workshop on digital storytelling that I was facilitating. The participants were struggling with the technical aspects of creating their own websites and publishing their stories online. They were intimidated by the complex and often confusing platforms that were available to them. It was then that I realized that there was a need for a simpler, more user-friendly tool for creating and publishing content online. And so the idea for Splots was born. The first plot I created was called the Story Box. It was a simple tool for creating and publishing digital stories online. The Story Box was designed to be as user-friendly as possible, with a clean and intuitive interface that even those with no technical expertise could use. The Story Box was an instant hit. It was easy to use, and it produced beautiful and engaging digital stories. I knew I was onto something, and I began to think about how I could expand the concept of splots to other areas of online learning. Over the next few years, I continued to develop and refine the concept of splots. I created new tools and applications that were designed to be simple, intuitive, and user-friendly. I focused on creating tools that would help educators and learners create and share content online without the need for technical expertise. One of the most exciting things about splots is that it has grown organically over time. It has been adopted and adapted by educators and learners all over the world who have used it to create a wide variety of content, from digital stories to portfolios to online quizzes. One of the things that I am most proud of about Splots is that it is an open source project. This means that anyone can use, modify, and improve the tools that I have created. It also means that the community of Splots users is constantly growing and evolving as new people contribute their ideas and expertise. Another key feature of Splots is that it is designed to be lightweight and flexible. It doesn't require a lot of server space or processing power, which makes it ideal for use in areas where internet connectivity is limited or unreliable. It can also be customized to suit the needs of different users and contexts. I believe that Splots has the potential to revolutionize online learning. It is a tool that puts the power of content creation and sharing into the hands of educators and learners. It empowers them to create and share their own stories and experiences and to connect with others in new and meaningful ways. Over the years, and I've seen countless examples of how Splots has been used to create engaging and impactful learning experiences, from the digital stories created by students in a small rural school in Australia to the online portfolios created by educators in a remote village in South Africa, Splots has proven to be a powerful tool for learning and sharing. One of my favorite examples of the power of Splots is the Instant Splot tool that I created in 2017. This tool allows users to create a custom website in seconds simply by filling in a few basic details. It is an incredibly easy and accessible tool that has been used by educators and learners all over the world to create online spaces for sharing their work and ideas. 
As the popularity of splots has grown over the years, I have been amazed and humbled by the enthusiasm and creativity of the community of users who have adopted it. Overall, I believe that splots have a lot to offer to educators and learners who are looking for a simple, flexible, and customizable way to create and share digital content. I hope that more and more people will discover the power and potential of splots and that they will continue to grow and evolve as a tool for teaching and learning in the digital age. Thank you, everyone, and remember to use splots. <laughs> so <laughs> that's AI Levine. Um, he and I have worked together on this project for a little time now. Um, I'm going to give some background of how AI &I, Levine and I were built uh, was built. Um, so this was uh, some madness born out of an idea that. Jim and I, Jim, I was struggling to come up with a conversation for my talk, so I, I was talking to Jim about some ideas, and we were talking about Alan as this poor human being who shared so much about himself on the internet, he became the target of sock puppeting. Um, if you've read Alan's blog, he's talked about how he's been a target in the past. And so we thought it would be really interesting to see if we could produce AI Levine. And, you know, it was one of those things where I was like, well, I think I have just enough skills to maybe pull this off, right? And it started with, I, the hard thing is I had to restart my computer, um, with a post where people are building avatars from scratch and using tools to do so. Um, I had to restart. Let me get... And I can, should I bring Alan in to talk about this too? Alan? Actual Alan? Or? <laughs> he, he, do you mean AI Levine or do you mean Alan? He's on the chat. I don't think he's very happy though. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to let you know, Michael, if we do bring him up. Okay, well, I feel like, you know, we spoke about this and he should be able to, you know, speak about yeah, it too. I'll let him know. I'll send him a DM with this address. Maybe Okay, so we'll, we'll leave that there. Um, oh, there he is. <laughs> AI Levine, how are you doing? You're, you're muted. I know that. I did that on purpose. <laughs> Who are you calling AI? <laughs> what is this? This is... Um, did you have a Creative Commons license? Did you obey the license? We spoke about this. You, 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 you agreed that it was okay to, you know, produce this monstrosity. It's, it's not. It's you. It's not me. But Michael, I have always been AI. I have always been artificially intelligent. Okay. I read and train myself on the entire internet, and then I generate things. And and. I am AI. This this is a mockery, Michael Branson Smith. I thought you were an artist. Wait, I, I, I thought I'd share the first version. You know, I mean, I don't know okay. if you've seen Yeah. This is it. This is about me and turning me into some kind. No, that's not it. <laughs> um, that's is this, a good this is it. So what mean ye splot? Splot, pick your acronym. No, that's not it. <laughs> There's a few. I, I get confused. I don't know who I'm talking I'm to confused. anymore. I'm confused. I don't know who I am anymore, Michael. <laughs> I thought those were you, but I'm not quite sure. Maybe this one's you. Is this it? Around 2 or 3 a.m. No, nope, that's not you. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've demonstrated the complete inevitability oh, of AI. This is you. This is it. Hello, Alan. Michael has told me so much about you. <laughs> Looking forward to working on our speech for Reclaim Open 2020. <laughs> now you can see why I get all the keynotes. <laughs> <laughs> that was definitely I you. Am re <laughs> so that's that's yeah, so that's how it started, right? I mean that's that was definitely you, Alan, right? But the, the yeah. 
But how does it work? Like, what does it do? Oh, so, I mean, my my AI, Levine, which it's so enjoyable to be in charge of, and I hope to include him in my presentation as well. <laughs> He's going to be talking about copyright and uh, Photoshop's um, uh, use of their, what was that tool your, your friend AI Levine was talking about? Uh, generative fill? Yeah, or, yeah. yeah. You're, he, AI Levine's going to talk about that in my presentation, too. I know okay. you may have wrote about it, but I'm, I mean, he's going to speak in my <laughs> Well, he's smarter. He's a lot smarter. <laughs> and, and, and he's better looking, too. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, it, you know, when AI and I started, we were looking at ways we can, you know, take uh, tools that exist out there to build avatars. And first, I was like, okay, there's lots of open source tools, and I have to, because I had to restart my computer. I had things open that aren't open. Um, here we go. And now I need my glasses because things are very tiny. Um, this so is a long way from a this is a long way from a GIF, isn't it? Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> so there's all these what they call uh, text to speech models, right? And so text to speech models are effectively, you know, data driven AI models that. We've heard of them in the context of, you know, it's a, it's a version of a large language model type of uh, tool or image models like stable diffusion and things like that. It gathers all this data. Where it comes from, you know, it's not necessarily ever revealed to us, which is always interesting and problematic. But there were some tools. The, first, the, the last one you just uh, reclaimed open was an open source tool, right? And it was, I got the library and downloaded it and ran it and was successful. And I think, if I can find it, um, yeah. no, it's this one right here. You know, you can, you can see Voight, Alan is here. Um, not you, Alan, uh, but the other Alan, AI. And we built a model, and I was able to train it off of three samples uh, that were very short. And it produced, you know, I could enter a, a, a script, uh, I'm sorry, a sentence, and it produced it. But it was based on a model, uh, a rendering engine that isn't on the Macintosh. Inside Baseball doesn't matter. Mm. And it took eight hours. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, this isn't going to work. But in the meantime, I had discovered uh, a way of building using, there are a number of companies out there. And this is terrifying. And AI, you're fine. Don't worry. I haven't given you away. <laughs> um, where we were working on models of AI would be, right? There's a few different models. There's one more to share with you that's kind of interesting. Is this one it? So what mean ye? Sp Not that one. So what mean oh, ye? One. Splot. <laughs> Splot. Pick your acronym <laughs> definition. It doesn't really matter. But it comes from the conviction so that there is a great value in learners and educators <laughs> sharing their work on the open web. Does can't anybody remember up. the open web? <laughs> what? You can't shut them up, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so there was a lot of experimentation going on, and we were working on a bunch of different models. But finally, I came to, and just for fun, um, what is this, 11? Ah, uh, this is it. <laughs> um, let's log into this one. If we want, I want to hear Alan talk about, what would you like him to talk about? Jim Groom, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> um, let's, let's say, well, there's another, the other thing to, to recognize is, you know, Alan, AI Levine was built off of, <clears throat> uh, let's see, chat, here it is, five blog posts in which, it? No, I'm not That's using t large text models. April is in April. <laughs> it's really good at. Ah, oh, here it is. So, <laughs> I I asked another AI because you know AIs are really collaborative. It's kind of cool. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> no, they they really like one another. And so I had chosen five posts that were about 
Alan had written these posts about <laughs> splots that I had chosen 2018, 20, dating back to 2015, and rated 800 word speech in Alan Levine's, only because I thought AI hey, might do a better job. Um, <laughs> Look, fewer typos. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And so I wasn't totally satisfied, and I, I would ask again and to write a conclusion. And so it was a mixture of text that made, you know, A.I. Levine give such a wonderful speech today from a teleprompter. Um, and so with that, we can feed. So if we wanted to say, oh, I don't know, let's, you know, let's, let's see if, Let's see what um, we can see if we want to have um, Jim Groom talks about DS 106 history. Incessantly. In 200 <laughs> words, right? Um, <laughs> And so, you know, I'm sure AI Levine agrees with all of this. So it would, might be good to make sure we hear at least Prominent. This, 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 at least this last. Oh no, we'll line. never hear the end of this, Michael. Oh my at least God. this last line. You know, it might be great to have AI Levine agree for once with Jim Groom. <laughs> Jim Groom's vision and leadership have been Andy instrumental Junk. in shaping Diaz Andy 106. Junk into a vibrant and influential learning community. His work continues to inspire educators and learners to embrace the power of digital storytelling and engage in creative expression in the digital age. So, <laughs> so this, no, I, I mean, we could have, if, you're, if you want to, you know, if you think Alan was rushing, we can say, like, um, Slow down, man. <laughs> um, actually, I'm not sure. So, but AI, you can see AI Levine uh, was a, a voice that I generated using 11 labs. Um, and this uses a, 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 a I, I, I have five minutes. Oh, good. Thank God. Um, <laughs> um, do anybody have any questions? But I can talk more about how this works, if you want me to. The harder part actually was the audio model, to be honest. Hmm. I have a question for Alan. Alan, what's, when we came to you, what was your thinking? You've been writing a lot about AI. So what's your take on this? Uh, we don't know what the hell we're doing. Um, <laughs> uh, the, the idea that we can sort of detect AI is, is farcical and um, I think also like our preconceived notions are getting in the way in terms of what we think of. Um, and so none of the rules are, are applying. Um, at the same time, uh, like some of the things that it's capable of are the kind of things that we get excited about. So we're, we're dancing with that devil of the dark side and, and the light side here. Uh, but the dark side is really damn dark. Um, and, and I'm sure people can imagine generating people's speech patterns like it's good that it's bad right now and you can obviously see a fake um but you know it's going to get better um and so like what we think of as as content is is kind of headed for this big soup of mixed and and stuff together where we're not going to know what was generated by an algorithm and what wasn't how's that for a dark vision right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, this yeah. is the, I mean, Alan was actually very, we, we did not touch this without his support, you know. And we had he, thought about it. Yeah, we had thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> Michael thought about it. <laughs> it was, it's not my fault. No, no. Um, and we brought Alan in to see, like, hey, are you okay if we did this? And he actually gave the original training data to me. And then the funny thing is it didn't work well. So I went and got my own, but again, I was like, hey, you know, from YouTube videos. So it's actually built off of stuff I just found, right? And I talked to him about how, um, if I, I said, like, let me know if it's okay, because I changed the model, uh, the, the things that were, the model was built on. So the idea of building a Jim Groom model would be a piece of cake, because he's, <laughs> he's so prolific and endlessly on the internet. Yeah. And you're not out of, you did all this with 
free level access to the tool? Basically a dollar or two spent. Uh, there's, a, there's an episode of Planet Money podcast where they have uh, Robert Smith, who has left the podcast and is doing other things with his life. They, 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 they got a company to give them $20,000 worth of services to produce a voice that's good enough that they released it as an episode. Oh, yeah, no, the, it is already good enough. Like, I did speak to an actual company about, you know, because there was enough audio of Alan to work with. Um, and I, they like to work with at least 20 minutes, right? Yeah. Um, and, but it was going to be like $3,000. I didn't tell you about that. And I was like, no, can't do that. <laughs> um, I was like, on to the next possible way of doing it. But this one was actually, I think, even though it's monotoned, you know, if you hear them out of context, and if I made an effort to actually edit it and vary his speech patterns, which I can, you could do so. If you didn't know Alan, like I know Alan, so I know he doesn't speak, and so he's always making emphasis, and that was what made the video training not uh, worth it. He was actually subdued, thankfully, this one video that I found, right? Uh, <laughs> um, uh, so they want, and it's kind of scary, because they want subdued, monotoned people. Right, and that's what they're producing. Mm. Like you just stay still as long as you're still looking at the camera, talking in a normal speech pattern. We can reproduce you. Jim Groom is their nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to thank Alan. I want to thank you, Michael. I want to thank you. This is an amazing yeah. project and really a creative, thoughtful view into the dark uh, figure that. Alan painted for us. <laughs> 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 you rock, Michael. Yeah, you do too. That was so fun. Thank you so much. Thank you, man. Yeah. You're the best. <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.